when we decided to leave California because it got so expensive, we weren't sure where we were going to go. And a friend of ours drove to Bisbee one day. He had moved to Tucson. <clears throat> he drove down here one weekend and called us from Main Street and said, I think I found your new home. And we were on our way to Moab, Utah, changed our plans and came down here. And a week later, we bought a house. Well, it's the friendliest group of people I've ever played poker with. <laughs> they just sit and laugh all night long. It's just a good fun group. It's a good social, it's a good social event. It's, it's just a good, it's a good, all the, everybody in the game has become a, a, a good clo a close friend of mine. Floyd, chaos. Chaos, uh, irreverency, and wildly funny. He's a, one of the funniest men I've, men I've ever met. Brent. I want to keep you in. Lawyers do not do that. The lucky drunken bum. Well, he's not a bum. Typical, typical attorney. But they don't lie. Shading an argument is different no, than a lawyer has never lied. No. Oh, bull. That's what they call that. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I have never it. lied. Uh, you get them out of the courtroom and they drink like fishes or gamble like crazy. That's some of the bitches laughing at. Yeah. The famous night where Britt was so drunk to look at the cards, he had to close one eye. He could not talk. He could not walk, and he won more money than it's ever been won in one night at that poker game. To my knowledge, the recollection was like almost $600. It was pretty amazing. Who's Betty? Oh, she convicted felon. She's a convicted felon. Yeah, that's, we, we've never had a convicted felon in the game before. And she's a woman. She's our only token woman uh, felon. She's like a soccer mom. She's our poker mom. She likes to take care of everybody. Yeah. Kenny. Yeah. Oh, Kenny. Well, it takes a village to play poker with Kenny. God uh, bless him. He's, uh, he's an emotional... He's an emotional... Yo-yo. He's actually a pretty good player when he's, when he's sort of keeps his head straight. Um, but he, it's great fun to, uh, to, to trick him to, to catch him, because he, he loses his temper. <laughs> uh, he's a good guy to kid. He's fun to kid. Cedric, I get the kick out of Cedric. Cedric is the eternal optimist when he's playing poker. He just loves to stay in and he's... Uh, He's got a very sneaky, sly sense of humor. Uh, I, I quite enjoy Cedric. Well, that's certainly a possibility. Absolutely. I don't. I don't know. It's. Uh, I don't know. You know, it'd be hard. He'd be missed. It'd be wouldn't be the same. Um, of course, it's nice now that you're not drinking. It's a lot. The game's a lot safer. Hurt me! There's a wheel. <laughs> yes. It's not so noisy. Said, "Don't hurt me." <laughs> you're just saying how it's actually loud, much louder than him now. Uh, <laughs> I said, "Payback." Uh, I no longer get paid to sit next to Floyd now that you stop drinking. <laughs> That's how obnoxious he can be. Outside's really cool. Yeah, right? yeah. You can go up there. Yeah. Um, we um, well, all that wood across the street where they make those chairs, we get their scraps. And we use that as kindling wood. Um, and we were looking at the pile one day and we, it had all these beautiful shapes. And we realized we could use those as, as like a gingerbread effect for Sam's studio. So we, we basically shingled her, her drawing studio with those scraps of wood. And it's, it's really beautiful, I think. Um, yeah, well, you can, you can go see it. And, and what about the- and it was um, free. And what about the uh, 
bathroom. Tell me about how you put that together. Well, the bathroom um, contains my toy collection. Um, uh, say, I, I say, I don't know, for some reason, I've always loved toys. Um, so I have, I have been saving toys since I was a kid. So I even have toys that I used to play with at my grandmother's house. Um, so that collection used to be in my studio and we just decided to move it home where I could see it a little more often. So it's just a, it's just a, it's just a kind of a silly collection of personal toys of mine and um, interesting things that I've collected um, all my life. Is there, in that little space. Is there any, like can you name maybe one or two or three toys? Um, there's a, there's a rubber duck in there that's fallen apart that I have a picture of, of me sitting on the floor when I was 18 months old, holding that same, that, that toy. And then there's a couple of toys in there on the wall um, that were my uncles that I used to play with at my grandmother's house, and I have those in there too. Uh, so those are two, those are some of my most cherished things there. What, the a couple, your, what are the ones your uncle gave you? What do they look like? Um, the, uh, they're on the wall, they're old, they're very primitive, old, um, uh, like a pinball, well not a, um, a handheld pinball machine. It's just got little steel balls in it with a glass top and then it's got um, pegs inside of it and you, sh and you shoot the ball up, up a ramp and it, and it falls back, you know, it, it, uh, it makes its way back down at the bottom and it falls in the slots for different uh, point values. It's a very primitive Pinball machine. Because if we walk around here, I'm trying to think. In any other one, just another. Is that coming? Well, the around? dock, and then there's a there's a few things in there that my grandfather made. Uh, he used to kind of be a tinkerer, and there's just some wooden boxes and things that he made. So if the house caught on fire, I would grab. Uh, those would be some of the things I would grab. You like drawing them? Um, I like the crows because uh, one, uh, I love the natures of crows. They're very pesky, they're very smart. Um, they're probably gonna take over the world someday. They're tricksters, and, they're, and graphically they're beautiful to draw. You know, black and bold and big and good, good shapes.